What's going on guys, back again with a margin call Monday and I hope you guys had a good weekend, had a pretty interesting, kind of boring week last week because of NFP and now we also, for this week we have coming, we have uh, the 4th of July, so we've got uh, the American holiday and obviously I believe the UK from what I understand is also kind of be a, going to be a bit more quiet because of that. So Mohammed's not will not be joining us today, So, but I'll be taking you guys through sort of all the charts I'll be looking at giving you guys a quick breakdown of what there is for the potential week. I'll have a bit of a recap of what I did last week with my trading as well. Uh, but I actually tried to record the video earlier and ended up not having any sound on when I was about to edit it. So I have to redo it. Uh, so you guys will see I already have my lines up and everything. So it'll make it a bit quicker for the video as well. But let's dive into it. So currently we're looking at the US 30. This is the daily time frame. Now what I was talking about did have a beautiful little consolidation area. If we have a look here on the weekly time frame, uh, we can see we had a bit of a potential fake out. Now a fake out is a pretty popular, uh, popular sort of pattern, but I'll quickly explain it to you guys, give you guys a quick breakdown. So usually what we have is, like I mentioned, we like a show here on this line, we've got a bit of support coming up. We did see some resistance. We obviously again saw some support. Then what we had was this big candle that pushed back to the downside, broke completely through it. And the next candle straight after that, broke all the way back up, almost kind of matched it. So we have these almost, I would kind of call them two brother candles. Now, this is the fake out we're looking for now. Generally, what we want after that is the market to reject, come back down and reject on this sort of previous support zone. Obviously, if it's the other way around, if we have the market fake out to, if we have a bit of resistance, support, sorry, see the market fake out back to the downside. We generally want to see a retest on that area. So that's to the upside like we have here and obviously vice versa uh, to the, uh, to the downside as well. We see this sort of that rejection as well. Now, even this is a pretty common pattern. If you have a look on the, on the slow, smaller term time frames, you tend to see this quite a lot where the market kind of moves sort of in a sharp move to the upside and back to, to the downside. And we generally see a push back down. So we, this is a pretty common move, but using candlesticks, you see it a bit more clearly in my opinion. And it gives you a, a sort of a better advantage because if we do see this, it's more likely that the market will go back into the direction of the fake uh, against the fake out. So let's have a quick look at this. So obviously we are sitting, this is a weekly time frame, and we are sitting at a pretty major resistance. So if we drop down to the daily time frame, we can see pretty big resistance drop down even further to the four hourly time frame. We start to see some rejection there. So we could still play between these support slash resistance zones. So sort of this uh, consolidation area, this could be a sort of the market could still move in below here. Now obviously, for me, the bias is still to the upside. I'll give you guys a sort of breakdown why on that. But for the time being, we can see market is slowly starting, could potentially still consolidate in here. Now, the reason for the bias to the upside, if we have a look at the daily time frame, you know, we're approaching these all time highs again. Now, the US 30 Dow Jones obviously is a, is a sort of a bunch together of the US top 30 stocks, right? So no matter what, the market will always continue to the upside. We'll have corrections as we usually do in any market. But unless the US economy completely falls apart and everything goes down, then uh, the market, this market generally will continue further higher. So uh, 10 to 1, we will probably see a move to the upside. Now we need to be careful. This is why we, it's so important to have stop losses because in trades like, in moves like this, the US 30, any sort of indice, the market drops very quickly because it's based on fear and growth is based, is not really based on anything. So growth always comes kind of slow because it's people slowly getting back into the market. But obviously when people start losing money, they panic and fear and run away and we tend to see sharper drops to the downside, right? So we already had a major cor uh, correction here. So we could potentially come back down to the support area, but I believe if we break past this high, using this fake out we see here on the daily time frame, sorry, the weekly time frame, we could push further higher. So on the daily time frame, if we could sort of kind of end up closing above the zone, uh, we could look for potential moves further higher. Now Euro USD, Euro USD, I actually took a trade on last week and I'll give you guys a little bit of a breakdown there. Just want to show you guys sort of, you know, what we're looking at at the moment. So currently what we have is we do have the market side. It's a nice strong push to the downside. We have a bit of a support slash resistance zone over here. Uh, we kind of had that bit of a head and shoulders. If, you, if I put you guys here on the hourly time frame, move over here, we sort of, had this nice little head and shoulders and we can kind of see the market is what kind of almost retest that zone. So we could still potentially see a push up to the area, but we had this head and shoulders, beautiful uh, sort of 
kind of double top over here and we started pushing back down now the trade i took was the downside i took it roughly around here now it was based on a four hourly uh four hourly fake out so that the trade sort of we saw on the euro usd sorry the us 30 i took it here on the euro usd now obviously because of nfp i had to be a bit more careful based on my trade so we had this kind of support area sorry resistance area i pull it down a bit more and we had this supporter over here so what we had was the market ended up breaking through come back down we had almost a retest on that came pretty close but then what really got it for me was this candle closed below the zone also closed below this support over here so that was my entry point I ended up putting my stop loss above here so my trade looked my stop loss i can't quite remember where i where i closed it out but uh into trade stop loss roughly about here i got about a two just just over a two to one risk reward ratio uh so i into i closed roughly right about here somewhere uh because of nfp you know during nfp i actually sat here on the computer watched the market spike down very quick i already had my stop loss to break even uh, so i was a, on a risk-free trade and previously this week i had a nice win on gbp jpy that i'll take you guys through as well but the market ended up pushing back down, moved in my stop loss pretty quick because generally if the market does drop, it will drop pretty quick. Uh, but obviously if it reverses, it can be devastating as well. So moved my stop loss in pretty quick, got stopped out at you know, roughly just, just above two to one risk reward ratio. And that was me for the week. So I took two trades this week. Well, I took three, I took a first losing trade. I took one losing trade, a pretty small one. I can't remember where I took it. I have to go through. I, I believe it was also on GBP on Euro USD. I took it. Uh, was sort of. I'm not sure. I can't remember now. But anyways, I took one losing trade, and two winning trades. One being on obviously this Euro USD, and one on the GBP GBP JPY as well. The winning trade. But for this week, for this uh, GBP for this Euro USD, we already have this sort of support slash resistance zone. We can see the market started to push back down, so we could potentially see it come back down to the 17,500 mark, 17,600 mark, uh, which would be a pretty decent zone to push back down into. That would be ideal. We see it start to reject already, so we can see on the higher term time frames we have it as a major support area as well. So if we can stay below here, we you can see the actual NFP that closed rejected that zone completely. So if we stay above, obviously bias will be. To the upside if we stay below buy so we to the downside hopefully we can fill this wick and potentially drop even further if we start getting some indications that we want to move even lower we'll start looking for some trades so currently your usd is on the is on the plate for a potential trade okay uh now gbp aud let's have a look at that i'll try running through it a bit quicker uh gp aud we have sort of it's a really messy uh if we look on the higher time frames we do see a bit of a double top so I don't really want to be trading this to the downside. It's pretty messy to the downside. Ideally, I want to wait for it to break this uh, 1.8500 1 mark. Big psychological level. We can see it rejects it all the time, like a lot. Uh, we saw previously that created a double top for us. So if we can stay above that, get a, get a close above that zone, we can start looking for moves for the higher. Now we look on the higher term time frames. There is not much traffic now to the upside, but to the downside, it is a big solid mess. All right, so. Close above the eight, the point eight, the one point eight five thousand mark. We could see some decent moves to the upside. Okay, so that's kind of what we want to keep in mind on this GPA you do. Now that is on the weekly time frame. So this could either happen this week or even next week as well. But I want to see the close above that zone. Pound yen. Now obviously, if GPA D is going to go higher, pound yen generally will go higher as well. Now what we have already had here, we saw a rejection. Let's go to the daily time frame, and uh, we saw a rejection of a support. And we saw previous support over here. We had a bit of a fake out, but this whole zone over here is, you can see, resistance area. So we see resistance. We had a bit of a fake out. Came straight back down. Re rejected it. Zoom in a bit more for you guys. Rejected it again multiple times. Big, big support. Big rejection. Now we see that sort of structure here. Again, bit of a fake out as well. These two candles matching each other after a bit of a consolidation. Let's have a look on the four hourly time frame. So we see nice sort of support being created we see a bit of internal support as well right over here by this head and shoulders we had a bit of a head and shoulders shot over here neckline back down neckline shoulder so we see this being held as a pretty decent support strategy this is on we also have on our four hour time frame we have our three pins now that's the three pins we spoke about i believe either the second or the third video we did and we see this over here one two 
three close way above the zone. So this could be already a decent entry for potential push further high. Now the trade I took on GBP JPY earlier this week was also the other one of my winning trades was at the break of this sort of wedge. Now we talked about this wedge being broken. We looked for a potential trade to the upside we did have. I ended up taking it on here based on the neckline of this previous er this previous structure. Obviously we had some support here. So once we started rejecting on here, I start I look for a trade and we didn't quite push higher. Now we also mentioned during that week that we'll generally see the market be a bit quiet because of NFP. The week of NFP is always generally quite quiet. So ended up taking a trade, nice uh, just over a two to one risk reward ratio. Took out my took my trade my profit right over here. Obviously didn't really run all the way to the potential that the trade could do. I was really looking for a push up here, but as we know, NFP kept the market pretty dead. So if we do push the upside, this could be our target now as well. So this could be our new target to push the upside. So that's kind of my overall target. If obviously, depending on internal support slash resistance zones, I will need to manage my trade. If you take the trade, you'll need to manage your trade as well. Uh, so that's the overall target for me, but this is already starting to look pretty decent to go back uh, to the upside, all right? Moving on to GBPUSD. GP USD similar sort of situation. Uh, we see a let's have a look here on the weekly time frame. We also saw sort of that double top structure, you know, not quite as strong, but still there. Uh, we saw a push back to the downside. Now, obviously, GP USD. If our uh, pound yen goes up, generally, you know, the, the other pairs will go up. So what we can look for a pound yen bias is to the upside, and our euro USD is to the downside. Uh, so that makes it a bit of a difficult one. So if we're going to trade euro USD to the downside, uh, we probably won't be trading GP USD to the upside, right? Uh, they look pretty similar, really, just for these final structures. If I can draw over here, I'll show you guys. If we look at the structure over here, weekly time frame for euro USD, we see the structure. Memorize it if you can remember. Try to memorize it, and then we move on to the next pair. So GPUSD, we see a very similar structure right over here again, right? So we see a similar structure, uh, so we need to be aware of it, okay? There's a similar structure to the uh, Euro USD. okay? Uh, so if we're gonna trade uh, pound to the upside, and we trade dollar to, if we trade pound to the upside, and we trade dollar to the upside, we won't be trading pound, US, uh, pound USD because we'll be taking a contradicting trade. Rather take, let's say, pound, Geared to the upside and maybe uh, Euro USD to the downside, right? So that could be a that could be a good trade, a uh, good two setups for the week could be uh, you know nice two trades for the week. USD CAD USD CAD bias is let's have a look kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place here. If we look on the weekly time frame, we're sitting in a major support area, and we're also sitting in a break and retest here as well. So we could potentially. Kind of consolidate between these two zones. So this is the weekly time frame for USD CAD. See some rejection. So this could be the sort of the trades and the movements we're looking at. So obviously, if we have a look at the lower term time frames, we could potentially look for potential trades inside of these zones. Now, we're seeing already a rejection here on the lower term time frame, but there's really nothing much solid. There's no solid support slash resistance. I mean, it's giving sort of rejections, but there's nothing really that says, hey, look, it's time for me to turn around. Like we had this double bottom back over here. Uh, nothing really major. We had a bit of a, a you know, that, that sort of shooting star three pin structure we had over here, which is a nice indication on that support stress resistance zone. So if you pull this across to the base of those candles, you can see these base over here. We had this beautiful little structure closed above that zone, and that gave us a nice indication for the market to push further higher, and we had a nice target to push into. Right, and then we obviously bit of consolidation, we had a break, we had a retest, beautiful engulfing candle, pushed further higher, had a smaller internal break and retest over here, and then pushed higher and higher and higher. Uh, this was a very nice move. So hopefully we can, you know, once we start seeing structures like this again, we can start looking at taking trades. Now I'm not really a big fan of this, especially on Monday, you know, the Monday after NFP, and now we also have, you know, uh, 4th of July, which is going to be, a, you know, market's going to be really quiet. And, you know, people who are going to be trading are generally people who are inexperienced and very uh, sporadic. So the market could be a little bit wild. So be careful trading today uh, or even tomorrow as well. Okay, move on to gold, which will be the last one we look at. Gold is stuck in a consolidation. If we have a look on the daily time frame, you can see beautiful push to the downside. Sitting on this nice support, we are, if we ideally, let's have a quick look. 
Uh, gold is also one of those pairs that eventually will continue to go to the upside unless people stop using gold for jewelry, electronics, and such things. Uh, the price of gold will generally continue further higher. Okay, uh, so you know, obviously, corrections are due, so we can't just take a trade and leave it. Now, obviously, swap for gold is you know, if your broker charges swap, uh, most brokers charge swap anyway because it's based on the central bank, even if they don't show the swap. Uh, you know they'll show it as some sort of fee or some sort of withdrawal fee uh withdrawal sorry that they do automatically on their side uh but swap is a pretty not uh, it's a thing you can't really avoid and swap on gold is pretty expensive just like uh, swap on oil i remember that a while back when oil hit uh, zero dollars or negative 45 i believe was its actual price but a lot of people a lot of brokers didn't actually offer that contract so they just cut it off at zero um, but then people bought oil and spiked up. They made so much money on oil on the buy side, but the issue was their swap was incredible, okay? So they actually made a loss because they swapped. And some of the losses were just ridiculous. They were way, way outweighing the profits they make, okay? So just be aware of that. Don't just buy and hold. So we need to be very, you know, we have to be strategic when we trade. You know, it's not, we're not investing here. If you want to do investing, investing is a whole different beast. Uh, which is, uh, you know, it's a more of a slower passive income until your account reaches a couple of mil, until you start seeing, you know, until you can start making a comfortable sort of payments out of it, especially from your dividends and everything. But that, we'll talk about that. We can perhaps make a video on that some other time. But looking at this, potential push to the upside. We're seeing some nice rejections. We've got a clean zone to the upside. Also, a bit of a clean zone to the downside. This is the weekly time frame. Uh, so obviously, you know, we're looking at the bigger picture. So ideally, if we can go above, we can see a bit of, you know, this consolidation zone. If we can go into this, uh, you know, start pushing this 1800 mark, we could see some beautiful moves back to the upside of gold. Now we have a bit of an internal support slash resistance zone right over here. So we need to be careful of it. Uh, if we do break past it, then great. But if we don't, we need to start looking at moving stop losses in, you know, potential take profits. But ideally, you know, if we do get a trade above this area, I'll be looking to push all the way up to 1870, perhaps 1860, I would say, uh, roughly about that area, okay? So that's sort of a nice potential area. So uh, keep in mind, you know, holidays, 4th of July, markets will be quiet. We just finished NFP, so it's a pretty interesting week. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of the breakdown, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. It will help us a lot. You can get new updates or videos we'll be doing. We'll also be releasing uh, more videos. So. Mohammed and myself will be doing our own personalized playlist where we kind of take you guys through our own way of trading. So we're talking about trade updates that we do, you know, how we trade, <coughs> what trades we took. It kind of breaks it down for you guys. You guys can kind of understand how, you know, professional traders really do it and how we really look at the market. Like you can get a sort of inside scoop, if, if we can call it that. Uh, so we're re releasing a lot of those videos and, you know, lots of things to come in the future as well. Also, give us a follow on Instagram, rhodium underscore fx. Uh, we'll be, we post a lot of information there as well. We'll be doing weekly updates, you know, updates based on the trades we took this week. So if we analyze something on Monday, we go on Instagram throughout the week and update you guys on that via story or via post. Okay, uh, so definitely give us a like, give us a subscribe, give us a follow on Instagram. Stay tuned, guys, and trade safe.